Hey everybody, Steve here at Pacific Crest Cemetery in Redondo Beach, California, and this is a cemetery I've never visited before. It's a smaller cemetery, and it's really not very well marked, so if you don't know where you're going ahead of time, you're probably not going to find the gravesite you're looking for unless the office happens to be open. Now, I'm here on a Sunday. The office is closed. Fortunately, the person that I'm coming here to visit today has a GPS on their Find a Grave Memorial page. No other instructions or anything, but there is a, a gravesite photo and a GPS. So I thought I would just come here and take a chance that the GPS would be correct. So the person that I'm here to visit today, her name is Jacqueline Lee Lamp. And that name may sound familiar to some of you. She was brutally murdered on September 3rd, 1979, here in the Southern California area in the San Gabriel Mountains, right above the city of Glendora. Jacqueline was only 13 years old when she was killed. She was with her good friend, Jackie Gilliam, who was 15, and the two girls were sitting at a bus stop, waiting for a bus to take them to Hermosa Beach, when a van pulled up, and the man inside asked them if they wanted a ride. This was back in the 1970s when, you know, teenagers didn't think twice about taking a ride from somebody in a car or a van or hitchhiking to get where they wanted to go. It was a relatively safe way to get around back then. Of course, these days, almost nobody would do that, and partially because of what happened to them. They had the awful misfortune to have been picked up by two of the most notorious serial killers in American history, Lawrence Bittaker and Ray Norris two of the most sadistic, disgusting, evil people who have ever walked the face of the earth. Picked them up that day in their van. Norris was hiding in the back, I believe. The girls readily accepted a ride. Once they were in the van, Norris attacked them from behind. They had tried to escape, but the men were much larger and much stronger and were able to overpower them. And they were bound and gagged. And instead of driving to the beach, which was just a mile or two away, they took their final trip up until the San Gabriel Mountains. This was all planned and premeditated, and Bittaker and Norris had days and weeks earlier scattered out a location, a very private, secluded location, up in the mountains where they could take their victims and sexually abuse them and torture them and eventually kill them. And that's what happened to these two young girls. I'm not going to go into graphic detail about how they were tortured, but these two men were labeled by the media the toolbox killers because they used items that you would find in a, a toolbox, such as pliers and hammers and ice picks and other instruments to torture their victims, to rape them, and then eventually to either stab them or strangle them. And then in the case of these two girls, after they were dead, their bodies were just discarded by being dumped over the side of the mountain. Over a five-month period in 1979, they ended up abducting and killing and torturing and killing five young girls. But to make it even worse, Bittaker was so deranged, he decided to tape record the torturing. And sometimes it went on for a couple of days where he would just torture the girls mercilessly and record it all. The recordings were later used in court to help with their conviction and it was impossible for almost anyone to listen to the tapes. They were just so beyond anything that you can imagine, apparently, from what I've read and, and heard on, on TV. There have been documentaries and news programs about this these killings, and it just sounded un, unimaginable. It just seemed unimaginable that they could not only torture and kill these young girls, but then record the killings to have as a memento, I guess, a keepsake of their horrible deeds. In 1981, Bittaker was sentenced to death and sentenced to death row here in California, but because this is California, almost no one dies on death row, at least not in recent years. So he lived to be 79 years old. He died December 13th, 2019 from natural causes at San Quentin Prison. Norris lived to be 72 years old, dying in the year 2020 at a California medical facility in Vacaville, California. They had originally met in prison because both had committed some pretty awful crimes before they were released 
and allowed to do it again. But again, that's a pretty common occurrence among these serial killers as well. It's beyond sad that these two evil killers were able to live very long lives when the young girls that they tortured and killed weren't allowed to live their lives. Two of the five girls that were murdered, their bodies were never found, which is just even more awful. I mean, can you imagine how the parents felt to know that not only were their young daughters murdered and discarded up in the mountains, but that their bodies were never discovered? According to the one of the documentaries I watched, it, it sounded as if because of the weather and animals and other natural occurrences, within weeks or months, their bodies had just deteriorated and the bones had been scattered and there was just nothing left to find. Talk about making an awful situation even more awful for their parents. But the bodies of three of the girls were found. I'm going to see if I can visit the other two grave sites, if I can find them. They do have Find a Grave Memorial pages. So I'm going to head over and see if I can find the next grave site now. So here I am a few weeks later at Oakwood Memorial Park and Cemetery in Chatsworth, California, which is just over the hill, over the 405 into the San Fernando Valley. And this is where Jacqueline Gilliam is laid to rest. At least according to her Find a Grave Memorial page, there was a nice photo but no instructions on how to find her crypt. I can't tell if it's a crypt or a niche, but there was a really nice photo. So I called the cemetery and they were nice enough to give me directions to find it. Gilliam was only 15 years old when she was picked up with Lamp while they were heading to the beach. And it's funny, maybe they were friends because they're both named Jacqueline. I don't know if one of them went by Jackie and the other by Jacqueline or if they went, both went by Jackie. But I'm really glad that I'm able to visit both of their grave sites, which is something I can't say about the very first two victims of these awful serial killers. Sadly, the bodies of Lucinda Schaefer and Andrea Hall were both lost. After they were brutally murdered, they were just tossed over the side of the embankment over a hillside. Hall was 18 years old and Schaefer was only 16 years old. According to the directions that were given to me by the park, once you enter through the front gate, you just go straight up the hill on the west side of this park to the second outdoor or open air mausoleum. Then you take this sidewalk here from the street straight back to the back side of this mausoleum and Jacqueline Doris Gilliam's final resting place is supposed to be right here at the corner. So let's go see. As I mentioned, the photo on her Find a Grave Memorial page was so cropped in that I couldn't really tell if the plaque was on the front of a full-size crypt or a smaller cremation niche. But I see now that she was cremated and this is a very small cremation niche. Jackie Gilliam was 15 years old when she died on September 3rd, 1979 and her friend Jacqueline Lamp was 13 years old. So they were both just barely teenagers just heading down to the beach for a day of fun when their lives came to a shocking and brutal end. Before I leave here today and head over to the next cemetery, let me pan around as I like to do to show you what the section looks like surrounding the final resting place of her cremated remains. It's a really beautiful cemetery in a very peaceful setting here and there are quite a few very famous people who are also laid to rest here in the cemetery. So Jacqueline is in very good company. The third and next grave site belongs to Lynette Ledford, and she's buried in the ground not too far away at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in the Hollywood Hills. Lynette Ledford was the last victim of the toolbox serial killers. And before coming here, I checked out her Find a Grave Memorial page. There was one tiny picture and it did say which section and which grave, so I had some information to go from. And I also have a map of the cemetery, so I had a pretty good idea where it was located, but it, this particular section here, which is the Remembrance section, is not well marked at all. It's very difficult to find grave sites in this particular section. But I kind of lucked out today and found her grave site, and I just added a GPS, and I just can't believe that she's laid to rest right here in front of the Courts of Remembrance where I visited dozens and dozens of times over the last five years. And I had no idea she was laid to rest right here. 
Letford was only 16 when she was abducted on Halloween, October 31st, 1979, and her body was found on November 1st, 1979. I guess she was one of the lucky ones that at least they found her body. As I mentioned, two of the others, their bodies were never found. So these are the five victims of these two heartless serial killers who just snuffed out their lives, took their lives before they even really had a chance to start their lives. And they did it just for fun, just for kicks, for thrills. I mean, it's just hard to believe there are people like that in the world. No matter how many times I visit grave sites like this, it's just still so difficult to imagine that there really are just cruel people like this in the world. I mean, just it's beyond cruel. It really is evil in the purest sense of the word. And as difficult as it is to visit grave sites like this, I'm glad that I was able to find and visit, pay my respects to all three of their grave sites and to share them with all of you so their memories aren't forgotten. We can only hope that the serial killers over time will be forgotten, but that their victims' lives will live on forever. Thank you for joining me on this extra sad trip to the cemetery today. And until next time, thanks for sharing the memories, everybody.